Today, let's look at a well-known functional equation, which is the Cauchy's functional equation, where we want to find all functions f from the rational numbers to the rational numbers, such that f satisfies the additivity property, which is f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for all rational numbers x and y. So to begin solving this functional equation over here, you can actually try to get some solutions for this functional equation, which is you can see that if you try to think of a function that satisfies this additivity, the possible functions over here is the first one is f of x equals to x, which is the identity function. And then you can also see that the zero function also works for this case. And then you can also try other functions, which you can see that f of x equals to 2x, f of x equals to negative x. They all also works. So you can actually think that the possible functions are actually of the form f of x equals to c times by x, where c is a rational number. So indeed, this is actually the set of functions that satisfy this functional equation. So now our goal in this case is to prove that the only functions that satisfy this functional equation are indeed all linear functions. So after guessing the functions that satisfy this functional equation, we will start by putting some simple values into this functional equation, which is first I can see that when x equals to y equals to 0, what we have is that f of 0 is equal to f of 0 plus f of 0, which is 2 times by f of 0. And this will give us f of 0 equals to 0, which is the first piece of information that we have. And then the next step, we can see that if we let x equals to y equals to 1, you get that f of 2 is equal to f of 1 plus f of 1, which is 2 times by f of 1. And then continuing on, we can let x equals to 2, y equals to 1. So this gives us f of 3 is equal to f of 2 plus f of 1. But what is f of 2? Well, f of 2 as previously, we know that this is 2 times by f of 1. So therefore, this is 3 times by f of 1. And then you can continue to put in x equals to 3 and y equals to 1, which will give us f of 4 is equal to f of 3 plus f of 1. Which in this case, you can see that by the same argument, f of 3 is equal to 3 times by f of 1. This will give us 4 times by f of 1 and then etc. So you can actually notice a pattern going on, which I will state in this following claim, which is that we claim that f of n is equal to n times by f of 1 for all n being natural numbers, which is the positive integers. So to prove this, we will prove by induction. So first, we know the base case over here, which the base case is n equals to 1, and it is obviously true. And now we will move on to the inductive hypothesis where we assume for some k being a natural number, we have that f of k is equal to k times by f of 1. And then now we have the inductive step over here is that we know that f of k plus 1 is equal to f of k plus f of 1 by using the additivity of the function f. So therefore, this will give us, well, f of k is k times by f of 1, and we add it with f of 1. So this is k plus 1 times by f of 1, which is essentially what we want to prove. And so this shows that our claim is indeed true. And so therefore, you may now ask, what about the integers that are negative? Well, in this case, we can see that if we let y to be equal to negative x, what we get is that f of x minus x is equal to f of x plus f of negative x. And now you can note that f of x minus x is equal to f of 0, which is equal to f of x plus f of negative x. And then now f of 0 is just equal to 0. So this tells us is that f of negative x is equal to minus f of x. And so this means that our function f in this case is an odd function. 
And so this means that we have taken care of the negative values of the integers. So therefore we know that f of k is equal to k times by f of 1 for all k being an integer. And now having taken care of the integers value, we'll now move to the rational values of the function f. So now our goal is to show that f of p over q is equal to p over q times by f of 1 for all p, q being integers. So to show this, I'll first actually restrict p over q to be positive rational numbers because if we can show that positive rational numbers satisfy the property that f of p over q is equal to p over q times by f of 1 by the oddness of the function f, we have shown that this also holds for all rational numbers. So now what we can do is that we can notice that we have that f of p is equal to f of p over q plus f of p over q all the way where all the terms are p over q and how many p of q we have well essentially we have q terms and then this is valid is because this holds by the additivity of the function f and so this tells us is that it is equivalent to q times by f of p over q but now we can now notice that what is f of p well f of p is p times by f of 1 by the property we have shown in the previous section over here. And so this tells us is that we have that f of p over q is equal to p times by f of 1 over q, which is indeed p over q times by f of 1. And here we note that this holds for all p, q being positive integers. But then by the oddness of f, we know f of p over q is equal to p over q times by f of 1 for all p over q being rational numbers. And so therefore, we have successfully shown that f of x is equal to c times by x, where c is a rational number. Because c over here is actually just the value f of 1, and f of 1 is a rational number. So we can just replace it with c times by x. And so therefore, we have proven the case where f is a function from the rational numbers to the rational numbers. And now we actually have to look at the extended version of the Cauchy's functional equation, which in this case is a function from the real numbers to the real numbers. So for the extended version of the Cauchy's functional equation, which is we want to find all functions f from the real numbers to the real numbers, such that f still satisfy the additivity property, for all x, y being real numbers. But in this case, we need some extra conditions in order for us to have some nice function f to satisfy this functional equation. So the first condition is that f is continuous. And the second condition is that f is monotone. The third one is f of x is non-negative for all x being non-negative. Or any other non-trivial interval that f is bounded above or below. So like I said, the nice function over here is actually all the functions where we want the function f to be equal to c times by x, where c is a real number over here, because we have extended f from the rational numbers to the real numbers. So because we want some nice functions, which is over here that f is actually well behaved, and the importance of this is that when you extend the function f from the rational numbers to the real numbers, there may be some discontinuity going on so that f may not be a nice function if we don't have all these extra conditions, meaning that f may have a spike at some region of the function. So in order for us to have a well-behaved function or some nice function f, we must have all these extra conditions. So now we will show that these three extra conditions will lead to the solution f is equal to all the linear functions. So for the first case, if we have f is continuous, we know by continuity, we can actually pick a sequence q of n such that q of n approaches to x, where x is a real number, and then q of n is a rational number because this is indeed possible due to the density of the rational numbers in the real numbers set. And so this means that by continuity, we know that f of x is equal to the limit where we take q of n approaches to x of f of q of n. 
but then because q of n is a rational number we know by our previous section over there you can actually show in this case the rational numbers will map to c times by the rational number so therefore this means that this is equivalent to q of n times by f of 1 and so this means that we have that this is equal to x times by f of 1 so this also proves that f of x is equal to c times by x for all x being a real number and for the second case if we have f is monotone which in this case will take f being an increasing function if f is decreasing the proof is essentially just the same just that you tweak it a bit so we we'll have that f of x is greater than or equal to f of y when we have that x is greater than or equal to y and so now what we'll do is that we'll define another function g of x which is equal to f of x divided by c where we know c is equal to f of 1 and so we should have that g of x is the identity function in this case we now can see that if there exists a number which we'll call as r being a real number such that g of r is not equal to r what we'll do is that we'll now derive the contradiction which is that we'll now without loss of generality assume that g of r is greater than r and if e is less than r the proof is still the same just that you change it a bit so now we can actually pick a q being a rational number such that we have that g of r is greater than q and it is greater than r where q is situated in between these two values this is possible by the fact that the rational number is also dense in the set of real numbers so now if we take the function g of q we know this is greater than g of r but then what is g of q well g of q in this case is essentially just q because for the rational numbers we know g of x is the identity function but now we can see that over here q is greater than g of r but over here g of r is greater than q and so this leads to a contradiction so this proves that we must have all real numbers r and it satisfies that g of r is equal to r so this means that f of r is equal to c times by r and so we are also done for this case and now we'll move to the last condition over here which is that f is non-negative for all x being non-negative so in this case we'll show that this is equivalent to the second case if we have that x is greater than y then we know x minus y is greater than or equal to zero so therefore we can notice that f of y plus x minus y which in this case is equal to f of x and then by the additivity of this function over here we know this is equal to f of y plus f of x minus y and then because x minus y is non-negative we know the f of this value is also non-negative so this is greater than or equal to f of y and now note that what we have here we know if x is greater than or equal to y we know f of x is greater than or equal to f of y and so this implies that f is increasing which tells us that d is the same as the second case that we have and so we have go through all the extra conditions that we want so in the end in all the problems that you encounter for functional equations if you know either of these three conditions are given or you can prove one of these three conditions you know that f of x is indeed the linear functions that satisfy the above additivity property if you want to solve some functional equations problem then be sure to watch this video over here